Good morning, folks. In last night's evening news, we noted the chance for a brief return of solar eruptions based on planetary geometry, a four-way lineup of Mars, Sun, Mercury, and Jupiter. This morning, they have begun already. The massive incoming plasma filament destabilized and ripped away from our star in an eruption that rivals the spectacular filament release of September 1, 2012. More than 100,000 miles of plasma is ejected directly towards Mars. Over the last two weeks, we saw a tremendous uptick in solar flaring due to our last major planetary geometry, but the largest sunspot in 25 years produced no Earth-directed CMEs. This eruption certainly has made a CME, but as it is in progress, we must wait for SOHO updates later in the day to track the blast. It isn't the only eruption in progress, though. The big departing filament up north is destabilizing as well. This was Earth-facing for a while now, but snaps as it turns away. Not as much of an ejection as the southern incomer, but still a marvelous filament surge. Now while filaments pop, the actual solar flaring has declined. Filaments erupt at any time, but flares need sunspots, and right now we've got tiny umbras only on the disk. Even with some magnetic mixing developing there, we shouldn't expect major flaring like we had the past two weeks, but we'll watch for development. Solar wind speed is elevated and peaking these last few hours, and despite the lack of geomagnetic instability, the low energy protons are in flux. Also have a high ionospheric delay southwest of Indonesia. While Peru took the largest tremor of the last day, the most notable is the very unusual quake location uptick continuing in Africa. Don't forget, we're now 11 days from the mission to land Rosetta's probe on 67P. November 12th will be a heck of a day for science. Something somewhat troubling. It was just four days ago we watched the Antares rocket malfunction and explode on the launch pad. A significant setback. But just days later, we have now seen Virgin Galactic have a similar problem with its new craft. There are casualties with this event. And what are the odds of two exploding flights in such a short period of time? Indian Ocean Cyclone dwindling down to nothing. The new West Pacific storm is slated to miss all but the small islands in this area as it swings north in front of Japan. Got a developing low headed west into the Central Pacific while Vance readies to dance north onto the Mexican coastline, Cabo to Puerto Vallarta on watch now. Big story here is the temperature. Look at the wind drive regulating a major climate extremes event in the eastern states as a huge mass of arctic chill has descended down through central Canada, through the Midwest, and all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. In the Mobile Observatory, I feel every bit of the Oklahoma City cold right now. Records are falling as we speak, and tomorrow won't be much better as we look ahead. North Atlantic Low takes the cake this morning in Europe. From Iceland to Norway and the UK, we'll have significant weather tonight. Down under, there is a broad convergence developing over land, drawn up from offshore, actually. It will rain over a wide area there tonight, but the convergence line itself keeps the worst warnings for storms. We'll be diagnosing those solar eruptions for tonight's evening news, but not before doing this week's Fly on the Wall episode. We'll discuss major events of the week, look ahead to the winter, and discuss timelines for the coming solar system shift that is causing havoc from the sun to Uranus. If you are not yet a member, it's only 3 bucks a month or $20 for the entire year of access. We greatly appreciate your support. Got shots of our star to close at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time. 5.05 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.